Hello, uh, today uh, I'm gonna go over the uh, delegate call and call methods. Um, these are a little bit lower level functions that can be called on addresses, um, provided that you know exactly um, what it is you're calling. Um, you have to be very careful with these, um, with these uh, function calls, particularly delegate call, um, because it's actually, it's, it's a very, it can be a very serious security risk um, for the contract that's being updated um, because you're actually upgrading the storage on that contract that's being called so which which I'll explain a little bit but um, just realize that these are these are design patterns uh, particularly using delegate call um, it's used for um, creating contracts that are upgradable uh, because when you deploy a contract uh, to Ethereum um, you can't uh, change it um, so using delegate call is a uh, creative way that the Zeppelin and uh, Aragon guys have um, helped come up with that uh, actually makes this possible to actually create contracts that um, you know maybe Solidity gets upgraded or something um, or there's some vulnerability in your, in your contract and you need to upgrade it really quickly um, you can do that using uh, delegate call specifically but again you just have to be very careful with that because the um, it's going to affect um, the state on that main contract which again I'll illustrate in a little bit um, so with that uh, let's get started. Um, I've created two contracts here, um, one called main and uh, one called delegate. So um, the real difference here is that the main contract is the one that uh, it's going to have the state uh, upgraded and it's going to call the function on the delegate contract. So let's go ahead and start with the main contract and what we're going to have there. Um, we're going to need a couple things first. Um, we're going to need an address called uh, delegate contract so that we can point to that uh, delegate contract itself. Um, we're also going to need a array of uh, these so that we can kind of so we can keep track of the version so kind of like a version history so we can call it previous delegates and um, I'm just going to make this a simple addition uh, contract so let's keep track of the total um, UN 256 public total and there's one last thing we need we'll uh, create an event and we'll call it delegate change so that we can notify the network every time this happens and we'll need an address and we'll do old address and we'll do another address and it'll show the new address as well and uh, that's it that's all we need for now um, so on the function side uh, we're gonna need one specific uh, function that's unique to the main contract um, and it's gonna be called change delegate and we're gonna have to call that um, when we deploy the contract, so we can point the uh, the point the, the delegate contract that we've created here. So change delegate, and it's going to create. It's going to bring in. It's going to take in a new ad or new delegate, and we'll have it return a bool as well. Ah. And we'll have it return true or false. So um, with this, so we're going to check that if the new delegate is not equal to the delegate contract so that way we're not constantly calling this and um, upgrading this with the same um, address and if it passes that we're going to do previous delegates we're going to add the previous uh, contract the, the current dele delegate contract to the array uh, that we created so our version history um, dot push and we'll throw in the delegate contract right there perfect and we're going to set the old delegate to the uh, delegate contract and this is going to let us uh, do the event um, at the end of this so we'll do old delegate equals delegate contract and now we can uh, reset the delegate contract to the new one so delegate contract equals new delegate that's being passed in and after that let's call the event so we're going to use the old delegate and the new delegate and just like that we'll return true and otherwise we'll return false if it does not work so with that um, we just have to call this method before we do anything and uh, we can actually point to this contract that we set and we can go ahead and call the methods on that contract and if you can see that's how we can um, create a contract that's upgradable um, because even though 
the state on this main contract is the one that's going to be upgraded, um, we're actually calling the method on delegate. So as a result, we can actually change what's inside that method and it'll affect what's on the um, main contract. And as I'm sure you can realize, um, that does have some serious security implications. So you have to be very careful when you are implementing this. Um, so with that, let's just add a couple functions. Um, let's do delegate add so we can show the difference. And let's do uint 256 var1 and uint 256 var2. And in there, um, I'm going to leave this blank for now. I'll go back to it later. Uh, let's do function and call add. And same exact thing, uint 256 var1 and uint 256 var2. And I'll leave that one blank as well. Um, so to go over this, we're going to do a delegate call and we're going to just do a regular call, which I'll show you in a moment. But the key difference is um, it's going to go ahead and find the delegate contract, which we're going to set beforehand. And it's going to call the method that we're specifying inside these, these, these functions. So it's going to call the method on this side. And it's the only difference between the two is that the delegate call is going to upgrade the state on this main contract, whereas just the regular call is going to update the state on the delegate contract itself, um, which I will illustrate in one moment. Let's, um, let's go ahead and set up the delegate contract first before I go ahead and put in the functions here. Um, First thing is that the um, the state variables have to be exactly the same um, on both contracts. Not necessarily not the functions, but the state variables do, uh, because when you upgrade something, it's going to uh, when you update it, it's going to look. It's, we're going to use a function signature, and if it's not exactly the same um, on the delegate contract, it's not going to find it. It's going to look in a different part of the memory. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and put this over here um, with the with the event and the uh, variables that we declared. And uh, I don't need to add the change delegate because like I said, it's just the, the actual declared variables. It's not um, the functions that we're, that we're doing here. So, um, and last thing, of course, we actually need to add the function that we're gonna call. So let's do function um, add, and it's gonna take two variables, uh, uint 256, uh, 256 var one, and you went 256 var2. All right, um, and we'll do total equals var1 plus var2. Very simple. Um, and that's it. Um, so this is what's going to update the state um, on both contracts, which uh, again, I'll show you in a minute. But here, so to make this work, um, all we need to do is once we set the delegate contract, we actually grab the address of the delegate contract and we do delegate call. And um, so inside the delegate call, we're gonna do something called a uh, function signature. So it's gonna take the first four bytes of the uh, Kesek SHA-3 hash of the signature of the function. Uh, and to do that, uh, all we need to do is we put in bytes four, which allows it to be put in the base, in the base version, in the base uh, type that it can be read. And we do SHA-3 is the SHA-3 hash, and we need to put the exact name of the function that we're calling. So that's going to be add. And inside, if it, if it takes any variables, um, which it does, uh, we just put in the type. So we do uint 256, and it takes two, so we put uint 256. And uh, at the very end here, we're going to go ahead and put the actual variables that are going to be passed in, and uh, hashed in as well, so var1 and var2. So what that allows us to do is um, specifically call the function on the address. So you have to actually know um, the address and the ABI of the contract that you're calling beforehand to be able to do this. Um, and that's it. Um, that should allow us to actually call this contract, delegate, add. And what it does is because it's a delegate call, um, it's going to update the state on this main contract. Um, and if I go ahead and do this here on the on the call add function and delete the delegate and just make a call. Um, it's going to call the contract function on the delegate and it's going to upgrade the state, update the state on this contract instead. And that's it. That's the only difference between the two. Um, let me look over this, make sure everything's good. And hopefully it compiles. 
So let's do truffle compile. All right, so we got a couple of compilation warnings. Um, this is because we're not checking for if it fails. So all we need to do is add a assert at the very end here. And actually, let's, ch let's change that to require. Require. And do this here. And with that, if we could do truffle compile, the warnings should be gone. Looks like we're having a small issue here. in the main Oh, there we go. Looks like I had an S there. All right, good to go. Um, now let's go ahead and do truffle migrate, reset, since I've already got test RPC running. And let's get the instances of the contracts that we're gonna play around with. So let's do truffle console. And uh, let's go ahead and grab the main dot deployed and set something so that we can play with it. Function instance. And we'll do main equals instance. And we'll do delegate dot deployed function instance. go and we'll do delegate dot equals instance okay so first thing we have to do is we have to set the delegate so let's do main dot change delegate and we'll set it to the delegate address so delegate dot address perfect so we can do main dot delegate address I believe it's delegate address a delegate contract contract dot call we can see that set and let's go ahead and call this delegate add function and uh, first thing up before I do that though let's go ahead and take a look at the total so main dot total dot call and delegate dot total dot call all right they're both zero as you can see here and um, so if I go ahead and call main dot delegate add here and put in one one let's see what happens so I go ahead and do main dot let's just go up here so main dot total dot call it should be two if we did it correctly which it is and if we do it go ahead and take a look at the um, delegate total it's zero so by calling the delegate add again we changed the state on this contract so if I go ahead and do uh, main dot call add dot and put in let's say 10 and 5 um, perfect so main dot total dot call still 2 and if I go to delegate dot total dot call it should be 15 which it is so um, at its core um, that's how you use call and delegate call um, like I said, you have to be very careful when you're using um, delegate call itself because um, you have to make sure that this contract that you're calling is a contract that um, 
uh, that that doesn't mess up the state on this main contract because this can really introduce some uh, security implications that uh, aren't intended. Um, and with that, that's it. Thank you very much.